So is Chad coming back? I think so. I keep thinking I see movement, but I'm not sure. That'd be funny if it was just like the empty chair of Chad Bowers for the whole thing. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to the, the Chad Bowers Memorial Podcast. <laughs> All right. So we are live. Dude, and Robert, you might want to reboot. I think I've got a frozen Robert Atkins again. All right, so welcome to the third night of uh, G.I. Joe Debriefed. Tonight we're going to be watching the third episode of the G.I. Joe animated series, miniseries, The Mass Device. Uh, tonight we've got Robert Atkins, and Carson is with us as always for 3D Joes. And tonight we're being joined by Chad Bowers. Chad, why don't you tell the, the group a little bit about what you're doing, what you're up to, and how you came to G.I. Joe. Uh, I'm hearing you, Chad. <laughs> Are you seeing the frozen Robert Atkins there? I've got, I've got five video windows, and one of them is Robert Atkins. Hey, I, saw, I see you guys. And the other is Robert Atkins frozen. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I'm going to try to boot frozen Atkins. I mean, unless you want two Robert Atkinses up there. You could change shirts, and you could have two different shirts on. <laughs> Nobody wants that. Are you kidding me? <laughs> we'll just assume that the frozen Robert Atkins is still giving his uh, explanation <laughs> of what happened on episode two. <laughs> right. <laughs> We're an hour 27 of Robert describing what happened in the 30 minutes of the first episode. <laughs> so, Chad, tell us a little bit about how you came to G.I. Joe, what you do, what you're working on now. Oh, man. Um, you know, probably a lot like you guys. I watched the first two episodes. Same thing. Toys first for me. Uh, it, yep. it, my, first, uh, my first toy was the Mobat. Uh, uh, yeah, that, if you look around on my my social media, you'll find you'll find pictures of me like as like three or four with the Mobat. So, first toy, loved it, motorized uh, Steeler, so great toy. Um, and then you know after that, every year uh, around Christmas or birthday or off and on in, in between, I would get a couple of figures here and there, a couple of toys. You know, uh, eventually fell in love with the comics. Just a few years later, after that, and uh, as I sort of fell in love with comics in general at the time. Um, and yeah, you know, uh, that, that sort of has, uh, like with you guys, I assume that love of GI Joe and comics sort of evolved into, I guess, sort of a career, I guess, um, something like that. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. Keeps, um, keeps me off the streets. Yeah, exactly. Uh, so I write comics. I've written, uh, a couple of things for Marvel. I, uh, was co-writer on X-Men 92. Uh, I did a, a Deadpool book called Deadpool Bad Blood with, uh, Chris Sims and Rob Liefeld. I've written some stuff for Dynamite. I've written some stuff for uh, Oni. I've written some stuff for lots of different publishers. I'm currently working on um, the Marvel Action Avengers book now at uh, at uh, IDW, and my first issue will be number four. And what else? Is there anything else? Oh yeah, there's a, there, uh, there's like the Snake Eyes book that's coming out, which I guess is probably pretty uh, <laughs> pretty uh, pretty important to talk about here. But yeah, that'll be yeah. out sometime. Yeah, I don't know. So anyway, <laughs> hey, that's me. That's so you're working with Rob Liefeld right now, which is pretty amazing. Um, yeah, you got to work. Was it? Yeah, you working with Chris Claremont on X Men '92. Yeah, I worked with a different Chris. Uh, okay. The other, the other, the other famous Chris in comics. No, Chris, I, Chris Sims is my co-writer on a lot of that stuff. So got it. I got it. Him on that, uh, awesome. and then of course the, inter, the initial miniseries was drawn by uh, beautifully by Scott Cobblish. And uh, and then Alfred Formancia did most of the uh, did most of the ongoing series after that. Awesome. Yeah. Well, thank you for joining us tonight. Uh, we're oh, uh, I'm stoked. I'm happy. We're sad to report to everybody that Brandon is down, but not out. Hopefully, he's just gone for one night. He's having some internet uh, stuff going on, so hopefully, he will be back on for episode four tomorrow night. So yep. he, he's having connectivity issues, but he'll always be connected right here. I just, I want Brandon to know that. <laughs> oh man. Yeah. He said the bar <laughs> high too. I'm, I don't know if I'm going to be that. Uh, yeah. By now, I think everybody knows the other three of us. Uh, you guys want to do yeah. quick intros, Robert? Uh, sure. You guys can hear me. Okay. Right. Yep. Yes. Okay. Um, yeah. Uh, my name is Robert Atkins. I've been uh, working on GI Joe kind of uh, on and off throughout my whole career. Um, Currently, I'm working on G.I. Joe Real American Hero um, and uh, should be wrapping up the uh, last couple issues of the Snake Hunt miniseries that's going on right now, uh, working with Larry Hama and uh, having a blast doing that. Question for Robert Atkins. Did you successfully yeah. draw every character in this arc? I think the initial um, goal was to draw every character of G.I. Joe yeah. lore in this arc. 
Uh, I've definitely drawn uh, a whole lot that I haven't ever drawn before, and even some that have died. <laughs> uh, I heard about that. <laughs> now, to, to Larry's credit, he did a me culpa. He got on the internet and he said that was my fault, and I apologize. Yeah. So, amen. You know, no, it was. Uh, no, we've gotten uh, we've gotten a lot of help. Uh, I know uh, Diana Davis is helping us out too, just to kind of be like our uh, continuity guru, which has been a blast, and getting to work with her, and we appreciate her help. Um, but so uh, pretty soon into it, I got a couple issues into it, and we were just realizing with my full-time teaching schedule, there was just no way I was going to be able to do 10 issues. So we got Neto Diaz uh, back on the book, and so he's been doing a, a phenomenal job, and we've been alternating issues back and forth. So uh, I've drawn, I mean, busloads of Joes, literally, uh, over the last few issues uh, as they're kind of transporting to the big fight. Um, and then... Uh, Netho's done quite a few characters that just have shown up in some of the scenes that he's drawing. So I think we'll probably hit it. I mean, um, with the amount of Joes that are getting thrown in here. Yeah. I mean, we have literally done dozens and dozens, my favorite word, um, but not, uh, I don't know if we've hit all of them though. We'll see. Yeah. Tom, what are you working on these days for people that haven't joined us yet? Uh, I'm not allowed to tell you. Okay. Uh, I'm working <laughs> as a character designer on an animated series. I'm really excited about it. Uh, and I don't know when I'll be able to tell you anything about it. Um, beyond that, some of the art that I do for Adult Swim and Cartoon Network's been floating around now for uh, the new season of Rick and Morty. I saw you had some billboards up down in Atlanta, right? Yeah. Yeah, I'm, uh, there should be some more popping up soon, but uh, God knows there won't be anyone on the streets to see them. Yeah, well. All right, so... Uh... I think, well, do you guys want to jump into the episode or do you want to take some comments? I got some, some you know, cr uh, constructive criticism that I need to address let's, more comments. So I'm let's, gonna, let's, do a couple, let's do a couple questions first. I'm going to scan these real quick. Hi, guys. Been waiting sure. all day for this, so that's nice. Thank you. Thank um, you. Okay. People, how the hell do you feel? What's up and how are you guys doing? There's a generic question for you. <laughs> I'll keep scrolling. He's not branding. Maybe it's... Uh, <laughs> Diana Davis pointed out, Chad, that you're not Brandon. I'm not. She is, she is a, uh, the, the continuity mm -hmm. guru, so she, she's correct. All right, so they're, uh, they're, they're uh, clamoring for the recap, but I think tonight uh, we're going to have Tom do it. I'm going to do it tonight. I'm going to do the, the anti-Robert recap. So uh, we're watching a cartoon about G.I. Joe, and uh, there's a MacGuffin. And the Joe team has to go get these MacGuffins because this big laser thing zaps people and takes them other places. And so the first episode, uh, Duke got zapped, and he went back to, like, this giant cobra castle. And there was a fight, and this guy said, like, the whole, and, uh, you know, so then he took, like, some, uh, like, a bubblegum wrapper and shoved it up under this metal thing on his forehead. Brilliant. And that, like, freaked him out. Because Cobra Commander had, like, a little joystick, and, you know, that was cool, but... Yeah. And so once you put the little like you know, gum wrapper underneath the forehead thing, it doesn't work anymore. So then uh, Duke uh, like hightails it out of the Cobra Castle and uh, lands in like uh, a Tiger King land. Uh, and eventually makes his way back home to Joe headquarters. And uh, so they check him out and he's okay, but you know, he's kind of messed up because that's what Duke does. Like he gets caught and then gets messed up. So um, then, uh, like, towards the end of the episode, uh, like, oh, wait, because I already watched episode three today, so now I, I hope uh -oh. I don't get confused with so, so then, like, uh, they're, they're, like, out in the snow, and it's Scarlet and Snake Eyes and Snow Job and Tripwire and Flash. And Flash never uses a laser cannon, which just seems really weird because, you know, he's a laser guy. Why has he got, like, a, a handgun and, and a flamethrower? So, anyway. So, uh, Snake Eyes, he goes into, like, this cave full of, like, uh, radioactive uh, pop rocks. And so Snake Eyes gets caught in the cave, but he, you know, sets it up so the other Joes can get out. But, like, so Snake Eyes, he's basically kind of screwed out in, like, all this, like, radioactive stuff. Uh, the other Joes take off and leave Snake Eyes behind because, you know, screw that guy. Um, right. And then I think that pretty much brings us to where we are now. The feedback, the feedback was, uh, <laughs> let's see, dang Tom, too much detail. Oh, man. What? I don't know. I'm with you, man. I thought that was a decent amount of detail. And the yeah, ad-libbing, the bubblegum wrapper up here, I thought, that was, I thought that was good. So, All right. Um, let me uh, get on this uh, Fobbit work of sharing screens. Give me a second here. Cue up episode three. 
So, Chad, you're you're younger yeah. than than us, I believe. So, when did you actually see this for the first time? I'm 41, <laughs> so I just had this baby yeah, I'm 40, face. I'm 46. So, okay. so you would have been? Would you have been um, old enough was it, was to watch 80, it when it aired 84? live? Was it 84? 80, 80, uh, 83. 83. Yeah. Yeah, I would have yeah, been, been four years old. Yeah. Uh, I do remember watching some of it, but I honestly can't remember if it was in reruns or if it was first run. I, I can't remember. I do know but that I have... watched – oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I've seen it. Okay, uh, all right. Multiple all right. times. And in fact, we watched this, like, just this past weekend uh, when they first went live with the with the, the live stuff on YouTube. So. Nice. Awesome. Yeah. Well, uh, uh, so this is – this is episode three of the first miniseries, The Mass Device, which is going to be in the title of this movie. And it's, this episode's called The Worms of Death. So spoilers there. You guys hear that okay? Yeah. yeah. I had a cat once who had the worms of death. Oh, it was gross. Get that cleared up? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Just, I mean, just there's like a pill you had to give them, and that didn't go well. <clears throat> Look at his abs. Can we have a, Have we seen Gung Ho in a speaking role yet? Yeah, uh, yeah no. I think so. No, not speaking. I think he, not he has one. He said gonna, something like, in the next episode. I think he's got a pretty big moment. Okay. Uh, uh, one thing I I've he noticed. He said something in like a background shot. Like he was. He it was like a oh come on you know that kind of thing. It wasn't yeah. anything mm -hmm. major. By being the fobbit of this thing and also addressing comments on Facebook, I've noticed I'm not getting to watch these cartoons at all. <laughs> oh, so maybe we yeah, take questions at the commercial taken. break? Yep. That sounds okay. good. I'm currently being attacked in my office here by uh, those giant mosquito hawks. So if you see me duck at some point, that's what's happening. All right. <laughs> it, 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 I've clocked at least three of them in here right now. All right, so here's the recap for everybody. <laughs> I think mine was better. Re recap, yeah. I think we keep forgetting that they actually do a recap within the show. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. We could just talk over that next time. Well, I mean, we that's not a bad idea. Yeah. See, now, we were talking about, like, favorite character to draw. Major Blood. I love drawing Major Blood. Oh, yeah. I don't know that I've ever drawn him in his classic uh, kind of uniform getup. Uh, you know, I just did the kind of the IDW version uh, when I was on the book. And then even in commissions and things like that, I've never drawn his version one. Oh, really? Yeah. So I know back in the Marvel Comics days, they gave you all model sheets for how to, you know, keep the costumes consistent and stuff. Is that something that's like religiously done now? <laughs> no, I wish it was. That's a joke. That's adorable. I know, I know. That's why yeah. I was using your website because I, it's up to me to kind of just search up whatever, really? whatever the original uniforms were. And then, you know, I just kind of make slight adaptations from time to time just to kind of modernize it a bit. Right. Well, like hey. Baroness right now in this episode, yeah. for example, she's got this yellow webbing on her shoulders and neck right there. See it? Yeah. And then uh, she's got the green sunglasses on this time instead of the black outfit. Yeah. So they I, they took some liberties in the cartoon as well with kind of switching it up. Yeah. Well, I'm sure that probably had to do with just so they'd be visible for animation. You know, something else real black, quick yeah. about the old design. Yeah. I always, for some reason, I had a fascination with the leg straps on Destro. Those really cool red leg leg straps that attacked to nothing. <laughs> hey, we, have you guys talked a lot about this robot yet at all? I know it like no, has a preview. No, not much. Previous. Yeah. No. I mean, this thing has to be like, like, pro droid inspired, right? Like, uh, yeah. Like the first strike back. Yeah. 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 Now, Ron well, we Mott, touched one because uh, they both have elements of Star Wars. Wars. Right. Yeah. It's interesting. I think yeah, Ron Rudat did do a vehicle Howard. design called the Tarantula that was, mm. you know, four legged kind of crawling oh. robot like that. Oh. But it obviously never got That's produced. Cool. All these people were inspired yeah, by each so other. Awesome. Yeah, radioactive snake eyes is amazing. And oh, yeah. kudos to really, Hasbro really, for yeah. giving us him in toy form. Right. Oh, right. Yeah. I, I love that figure. There's that radioactive canister, Tom. Yep. 
Ah, my buddy Ben Thomas just checked me on the Baroness uh, discussion. So Baroness is one of the few characters that was created and appeared in the uh, in the cartoon first, I guess. Oh, and, and then uh, after, you know, yeah. The figure for Baroness came out in 84, right? You had Scarlet 82, Cover Girl 83, Baroness 84. I, I'm pretty sure Baroness was in the first issue. She was in the first issue of the comics. She's right? in the comics, though. She's, yeah. Uh, so yeah, there you she go. was in the, she's first, in the first issue of, like, uh, so, G.I. Joe, yeah. Then it's yeah. out... It, then the com then my story stands. The cartoon changed her to blue with the yellow webbing. No, I, I think. No, she it, does have a. Yeah, she comic, has a similar her, costume. Her uniform, to it. All right, let's get topside. Yeah. Yeah. We are right over the deepest tree. And it was nice of the X Men to lend the uh, GI Joe team Cerebro. <laughs> He's got my helmet on. You know your team. Buddy up and get into your diving gear. Do you guys talk about why Breaker's gray at all? No, not yet. No, I, I, I don't know either. I just wondered. I always wonder why. Maybe they just didn't, because you know 1982, they were all green. Maybe they just wanted to switch it up a little bit. Yeah, a little color. Also, these wetsuits are really cool. I was happy when they did, like, the uh, the 25th anniversary version of that suit, too. Yep. Notice yeah. how they all have Torpedo's backpack on. Right. Yeah, yeah. The it's like cylinders. standard issue. Yeah. Mm -hmm. See, Pretty cool. now this was another thing that surprised me, just because I had the figure. Um, I think I had the figure at this point of Torpedo. Um, <laughs> and just I love him being like a, like a surf guy. I, know, I love this part where Torpedo comes up. He's like, hey, everybody! <laughs> <laughs> I, I often wonder if the, like, the Marvel artist Steely Loa was like what, that. His you know nose what I mean? just like, disappeared. That's like, uh, yeah. His nose just totally disappeared. Did you catch that? Oh, no. Yeah. You guys, you guys are going to need to read the comments. They're going back and forth on the Baroness costume. Oh. Uh. Now, is this the first appearance of Timber? It's got to be. Yeah, yeah, it's him. Yep. It's nice that he gets a little origin story in the cartoon. It's interesting that they did that uh, before they actually added it to the toy. Like, I wonder right. if yeah, this like, is what caused the, the creation of the toy. That's, it, you know, that's a really interesting question. Like, which medium fed which medium in terms of different characters yeah. being created? Because obviously, if Larry Hama, Larry Hama did have the Baroness in the comic, was that the first character that he created that wasn't an action figure form that then got made into a figure? Well, there's really nobody for, like, there's really nobody for Cobra Commander to talk to uh, yeah. if he doesn't have the Baroness in those first, like, that first arc. Because, mm -hmm. you know, you don't have Major Blood, you don't have Destro until much later, or well, much later, but yeah, so so I think she, I always assumed, and I think I heard this or read this somewhere, that she was there really just to kind of be like the point person for Cobra Commander to kind of like bounce stuff off of, you know? Nice. Um, but I'm pretty sure she's in the first issue. Well, the, the, I, think, I think you're right. The casting of Morgan Lofting as that voice for the Baroness, I, I think it was Joe Con 2012 or 2013 where I finally met her and oh my goodness yeah. that was like a gleeful childhood moment. Like, <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah, you, you had to really so, hand it to the. the do Joe we want to pause this for a second? Yep. For yep. some yeah. questions. Good catch. Good catch. All right, guys. Uh, if you got any questions, throw them up on the uh, on the Facebook real quick. So Skinny Joe fan said that Her uh, Hama created the Baroness because everyone had masks, so he needed someone to emote on the bad guy side. Yeah. I, I remember hearing ha uh, Hama say that. Um, enter the shark, which the shark right. didn't look like the shark. Uh, they had some other kind of submarine there. Yes, that's the first appearance of Timber in the cartoon. So the cartoon Timber obviously uh, informed the 1985 re-release of Snake Eyes version two. All right, you guys, throw some questions in here. I appreciate all the comments, but we're gonna stop on the uh, commercial breaks and answer any questions you have. So if you have questions for the artists or authors um, that are on this show, uh, please let us know and I'll try to not take up too much time talking while I'm scrolling through here. Scroll to the bottom. Yeah, no, I was gonna mention to your point, kind of meeting uh, Morgan, like it was the same thing for me. I met her at uh, Joe Con. Um, I mean, it might've been the same year. I think the year that it was down in Orlando. Uh, yep. One of the first times it was in Orlando. Uh, and, uh, yeah, she was awesome, man. I got to say so many of the, the Joe vo voice actors are so approachable and, yep. uh, just really easy to chat with. They're pretty awesome. Yeah. I, I, I still go back to Indianapolis when Flint and Lady J came up to our booth <laughs> at the same time and hearing them banter back and forth was a magical, oh, that was awesome. magical GI Joe moment. Yeah. It, you know, it, it wasn't GI Joe, but I remember at uh, Dragon Con one year, 
uh, hearing Mark Hamill's voice mm. coming out of his head oh, wow. yeah. was really <laughs> weird because I'm it's used to hearing it coming out of speakers my entire life. And here he is talking at me. And uh, it just, the, the, I couldn't quite process what was happening. It was a really strange experience. And then I actually ran, literally ran into him at the show. I was walking from one side and somebody like slammed into me and I'm taller than he is. And so it was one of the things where like I looked down and as my <laughs> eyes focused, I realized, hey, you're Mark Hamill. And, like as I was saying that like security was just kind of moving him along. <laughs> Get him away from this man. I'm just kidding. Well, I, I think um, there, there was a, a, a faint smell of alcohol. <laughs> So, and it was, you know, a little later in the day. <laughs> my, my, experience with the, my experience with all the voice cast has really been they all have like, which is great because this is exactly what you want, is they all have like one standard, hey, I'm going to go to this line and like, you know, just oh, yeah. blow it. Yeah. Um, Neil Ross, uh, it was like that when I, when I met him too. So, and, and Michael Bell and those guys yeah. all had like that one little thing. They're like, yeah, they're going to want to hear this. Neil Ross, I think, did the uh, did a lot of Springer when I when I ran into him, which was which was fine. Well, I love that Springer? he he'll, he'll still like cosplay shit from from, uh, from like, Trent, yeah exactly oh yeah awesome. yeah yeah that one show we did together he 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 totally did yeah that's right. What no back up those he does a lot of Springer I, you lost me there what what is Springer that the the Transformer uh the he does the voice for oh, Springer okay. and, and uh, Transformers okay I swear to God my thought was. He's on Jerry Springer a lot. <laughs> that that that's that's what I thought. I and mean, I'm like, okay, I, I knew that show probably has an element of bullshit to it, but right, right. I didn't <laughs> I think that's back it. To the, uh... back in, yeah. Now back to G. I. Joe. He's still radioactive. I, I I joke about this all the time, but like you know, Snake Eyes, most people die radiation poisoning. Snake Eyes walks like 15 miles, just like, you know, Everybody shakes it off. Here. Yeah. <laughs> Not this giant thing. He doesn't really use any karate here, does he? <laughs> no. He's just fighting this uh, bear with man pets. <laughs> That, yeah, but I mean, he, he's, he's, you know, pretty sick at this point. So I, I, yeah. I can get him not being able to get a, a karate kick in. Yeah, he's weakened. <laughs> he's weakened. Well, you know what? How much, you know, how much uh, martial arts do we really see from Snake Eyes in the cartoon? Not much. Yeah, I don't, yeah, I don't, I don't think there is much. I mean, he does. I mean, we definitely see it from Quick stuff. Kick and we see yeah. it from uh, Storm Shadow quite a bit. But, yep. you know, it's not like we see him going all... Even spirit, but um, there's like really not anything with like uh, yeah. with snake eyes. I mean, he does a lot of uh, infiltration and he does a lot of sneaky stuff. But yeah, it's yeah, it is more like uh, like like espionage stuff, not like uh, ninja commando stuff. They're very much sticking with the commando. I mean, he had a Uzi and an explosive pack, you know, as his accessories, and he wasn't really a ninja yet. Yeah, it's interesting that in the cartoon they didn't evolve his character to be more ninja e eighty five series. There is still like the there's the opening credit. I'm sorry. There's the opening credits to the GI Joe movie where he like takes that dude out of the trouble bubble, you know. But he like and he does like the flip. He does the flip on the bubble. Oh, yeah, and he yeah, lands and he rolls in. in. Yeah. And then he gives everybody like the OK sign as he's coming at you. I love that. <laughs> That's scene. pretty ninja. So is this old guy? Do you think he's inspired more by uh, Gene Hackman from Young Frankenstein or Denver Pyle from Grizzly <laughs> Adams? Uh, definitely. Because the there's, there's the elements of both. <laughs> so why does being radioactive make snake eyes glow? Because mm, that's how radioactivity works in the 80s. Yeah. I thought that was like a dad joke setup. <laughs> Man. I, w I really wish they had actually made a G.I. Joe submarine. Oh my gosh. I mean, yeah, this thing's amazing. I don't know. This thing's really cool. Yeah, I, I don't know about you guys, but there was there was probably about like a three year period of my life where I wouldn't take a bath without the whale yeah. and the shark and a water moccasin. Is that recent? <laughs> <laughs> I know the whale is still uh, 
it's still something I, I want to get. I don't. I've never had it. Oh something. wow! Oh really? Absolutely it's love. But I don't like one. It's amazing, yeah. and also it's got some very fragile parts. So there's some 3D yeah. printed yeah. Uh, replacement veins out there. The weather veins, or the not the weather veins, the directional veins on the back. You might want right. to consider if you're going to display it, use the 3D reprinted parts and keep your other ones unbroken. Oh okay. Very mm. fragile. I actually do that. I have a, a vintage uh, Buck Rogers Starfighter. The, the engines for that are prone to cracking. Yep. So I actually have some uh, repro parts on that just for display. I'm fine with repro. If it's just to go out on a shelf and you don't want anybody breaking it when they touch it. You know. Yeah. Oh, my God. Yeah. Okay, I got to take a minute. The sound effects of these worms, like, freaked me out when I was a kid. For sure. Like, oh, yeah. They're, it's awful. Oh, me too. It's horrifying. <laughs> Yeah, I, I remember ge being legitimately afraid. Yeah, no, they were just so weird. Um, I had to do, a, a, or not had to do, I got to do this uh, commission series a, a little while back with the guy, and uh, he was just really into, like, Duke as a, you know, it was dressed up in this yellow scuba gear, and it is, they've been so much fun to do. Uh, yeah. And one of them was straight from this scene, so I got to research out, you know, the worms of death. It was a blast to draw. Cool. But they were creepy. So the thing that the Baroness was in, I remember trying to build one of those out of Lego uh, and being absolutely furious that I couldn't figure out how to make it watertight. Because <laughs> I would take it with me in the bathtub and uh, within a minute or two, the water was seeping in and, you know, in my, uh, you know, eight-year-old logic or whatever, however old I was, uh, couldn't make it work and just furious every time. Oh, I do want to say, like, so Charles Nolan just posted about, like, the blaster effects, like the Battlestar Galactica uh, blaster and sound effects. And, I mean, it's it's funny as I've done rewatches through this, like, so many just straight up ripped off, like, Star Wars sound effects and, and yeah. like, yeah. and BSG sound effects. Like, I don't know if, were those things copyrighted back then? Like, how did they get away with Yeah, that's with a Transformer that? sound all the way. Well, so Transformers, yeah. I, can, I can totally get it, right? It's made by Sunbow Marvel Productions, same in-house yeah. facility. They're going to share sound effects. But, but I wonder, like, they obviously didn't have copyrights to Lucasfilm sound effects. Yeah. And they're straight up, like, Did you guys talk, I, 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 I'm and, cut uh, out for a second. Did you guys talk about the... Pause it real quick. Go ahead. Did you guys talk about the worm sounds? Yeah. How terrifying they were. That was it. Do you have any idea where they came from, or have they been shared on any other media? <laughs> Our Damn it, the on. worms got Chad. <laughs> <laughs> they got me. <laughs> yeah, this was pretty intense as a kid. Oh, I remember yes. watching this and, oh, he's back? All right. Did, did one of those ever put, like, somebody's head in its mouth? That would have been very scary. I don't think so. So, and what's with Torpedo's accent? I can't quite figure out what that's supposed to be. Yeah, I mean the character's Hawaiian, right? But is that, is that what it is? Okay. Yeah, but I don't know that he's playing it that way. See right there, that's what my Lego looked like. Right there, that's exactly it. <laughs> that's a recreate. So yours was actually yeah. very accurate, as it turns out. It, well, it was. It was, I guess. Now, in <laughs> hindsight, maybe maybe I should feel better about it. <laughs> <laughs> wow. So oh, Deanna's Deanna's saying uh, that songs you can copyright because there's something written, the score, the musical notes or whatever, but for a recorded sound, there's nothing written down, so you can't copyright it. Wow, that's interesting. Huh. That, that's because there, I mean, there are definitely sounds that are so distinctively, you know, associated with the property. I'm surprised that that can't yeah. be. Well, you remember the movie uh, THX, I think, Surround Sound? Yeah. Uh, Dr. Oh, sure. Dre. Dr. Dre used that on the Chronic, whatever, 2001 or whatever. This? And he got sued for a ton of money. So I know that mm. THX got Dr. Dre for millions on that. And I would argue that that's a sound effect. So maybe they are copyrightable. But maybe yeah, I, mean, I, I, I have to think that you know, there, there are sound designers mm -hmm. and um, you know, they have to be able to copyright their work on yeah. some level. So I, I, I'm, I'm not sure exactly how that would work. Yeah, you would think like the transformer sound would be you know, copywritten, right? Like the sure. transformation sound and those kind yeah. of things. Yeah, and, well, uh, you know, just yeah. the sound of a lightsaber lighting the up. Lightsaber, I mean, yeah. 
So we actually yeah. got a bit of information here from uh, Webster Ware. He said Nelson Shin created the saber sound effects and had Marvel's permission, uh, and he directed Transformers the movie. So oh, okay. maybe there was some career overlap there, and that's how it yeah. was allowed. Pretty interesting. Well, and it's entirely possible, like that they just sell like a sound library, um, and there are just things that are included within that library. Like that. Yeah. Yeah. Any other questions? <laughs> That's it. Let's no. get back to the yeah, cartoon. We're just going to speculate on copyright law for like 15 minutes instead <laughs> right. of watching the show. This will be our master's Man. course. All right, back to the cartoons. Good evening, Bill Leach. Thanks for joining us. This freaked me out. <laughs> that was pretty brilliant. Like, like this, this oh, thing here, yeah, yeah. No. That's, that's like just, oh yeah, it's like, well. You know. Now see, if you're listening, they say when they get to the top, the pressure will cause them to explode. Right. So I'm watching this this afternoon, I'm thinking about the people that are at the surface right now that are just, all these worms are coming up out of the water and exploding <laughs> when they hit the surface. <laughs> There's some poor, you know, fisher, fishing ship <laughs> just like blasted worm guts. Yeah. <laughs> Man, I love that red underwater bear in a scuba outfit. We got that modern era, too. Yeah, that's very cool. And, you know, I have to say, this is all so well drawn. Like, that's awesome. It, it, it's, it just looks fantastic. Well, and there were so many shows at the time that were like uh, just reusing frames, you know, constantly. Uh, I mean, just because of a pr production necessity. It's not to yeah. diminish how great those shows were, but this was like every shot is so fluid and unique. Like for the time, it, it was. I'm, yeah, I remember nothing else really compared to this at the time. No. Yeah, like the, the filmation shows were were built around saving money. Right. And uh, I'm hoping that later on we can get somebody who actually worked at Filmation to, to talk about that a little bit. But yeah, it really was just a phenomenal looking show. We were, we were very lucky to I grow agree. up with, with stuff of this quality. Oh, and I realized yeah. that the second they dropped the next series by Deke. Oh, gosh, yeah, <laughs> of course. Oh, yeah, it, it, it tries hard, but... The writing and the artwork. I can see it in your heart. I remember this moment especially being like, oh my gosh, this is a mystery. Because I, again, I didn't grow, I didn't see the uh, cartoon or the, the comics first. The cartoon was the first time I had really was introduced to Snake Eyes at all. So this is the first time it was like, we don't know what he looks like under the mask. Like, this is my first introduction to him not speaking. Yep. Um, yeah, and they leave it, they, you know, they do some smart writing here in that they have a blind man, the only guy who actually has exposure to his face, right? So, like, they, right, they, can, exactly. they, can, they can go either way at this point, you know? Yeah. And this is still my favorite Snake Eyes design. Really? I, I think oh, the, absolutely. The, I think that the angle on the back of his head is distracting, how that comes together to a point. I know it's really? a subtle detail, but yeah. I don't Oh, do we, I see what you're talking about. It's kind of like, about why is, is it's kinda like a, a mohawk resolving right there. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's, yeah. I noticed that last episode, but I didn't mention anything about it. But I was like, yeah. I definitely had not noticed that. Interesting. Who's that supposed to be? Steeler? Maybe. No, Steel, but who's the guy with Steeler? Oh, that's, is that not, uh, what's, what's not Short Flash, fuse? the other guy? Short fuse, maybe, maybe? maybe short fuse, maybe, yeah. If maybe. I could see his backpack, I could tell. I mean, they're you know, all green with visors. <laughs> I'm going to guess it's short fuse because he just lost his temper so quickly. And I'm not uh, trying to make a joke. Like yeah, I would, say, I would <laughs> say short fuse. I think that yeah, was really. Say, I'm like, just give it a second and we'll get like 20 answers on the chat. Real right, fast. right, right. Yeah. Yeah, it's short fuse. There we go. There's like five comments yeah. short fuse, short fuse, short fuse. Yeah. Everybody else knows but us. We told you when we started this series, you're not going <laughs> to learn, learn anything. anything. <laughs> <laughs> but I like the, how you guys deduced that it was short fuse that he like lost his temper real fast. That it's all cool. Tom right there, man. Yeah. Hey, I'm not just looks, fellas. Right. <laughs> no, wait, was that wait, who is the blonde with him? Is that Cover Girl? Cover Girl. Yeah, yeah. so she's a, she's a blonde in the cartoon. 
Yeah, that's right. She does. She have any? She doesn't speak or anything, right? She's just there in the background. She has like, a few lines here and there. I can't hear no, the dialogue. <laughs> she's got. A, she's got a pretty mo big moment. I think. Uh, no spoilers. Sorry, I won't. I won't reveal. Are oh, you good? No worries, Chad. Ne next episode, she's got a pretty good. Pretty good moment. There you go. All right, Chad. So, See, now, are are you a are you a toy collector and do you army build? Uh, say again, man. I missed that. I'm sorry. Are you I'm, a are you a toy collector? And if yes, do you? Oh army yeah, build? totally. Uh, what do I? Who do I army build? Do you? Yeah. Yeah, I, I do, but mo I mean mostly like you know, uh, real American hero stuff. So like, uh, vipers. Yeah. Uh, lots of alley vipers. Uh, it's probably my favorite viper. Nice. I think we're getting one in six inch, man. It hasn't been announced yet, but it's been shown in the artwork for the uh, new series that's coming up. So I, I don't see how we couldn't get it. Oh, there you go. Yep. I did always love the Wolverine, man. Like that's oh. that's one of my favorite. Yeah. I don't want to say favorite vehicles, but I just I, I do absolutely love the look of it because it's so unique. It is a great vehicle. I like how. I like how nobody loses their shit when Snake Eyes shows up with a giant wolf. <laughs> well, <laughs> all through the series, people just show up in the Jejo Joe headquarters and be like, oh, hey, you're quick kick. You're quick kick. We found you in the Arctic. Sure, why don't you do a joke? And then, like, just at the drop of a hat, somebody will ride in on a horse and be like, oh, you're shipwrecked? All right. Yeah, why don't you do a Joe? Yo, Joe. <laughs> yeah, all right. So we got we got another uh, Snake Eyes Scarlet moment there. He comes in yeah. and she yeah. runs up and gives him a hug. She doesn't hug anybody oh, else. That's true. She didn't hug anybody else. No, she didn't hug Duke. Duke was like off to the side with the scientist, trying to act like he wasn't jealous. I know, but he, he gave those that side eye. He I bet he did. Going on. I bet he did. He noticed that wolf. <laughs> oh man, Snake Eyes, you brought that right in like a Trojan horse. He really did, man. Come on. Thanks, Snake Eyes. That's it. That's the end of G.I. Joe. No. That's it. They all died. The These end. episodes are going so quick. <laughs> no more episodes. <laughs> man, what a down note to end on. Really? They all die. <laughs> Just when he got a dog, too, man. I know, man. Oh, man. On the next episode, Stalker still got on his jetpack. <laughs> he always wears that thing. Oh, I got that. Ah, uh, there's the Rattlers. Yeah. Man, again, I, I didn't start collecting to 86, unfortunately, man, so I could never get, like, the Rattler, the Dragonfly, the Sky Striker. It was such a painful oh, childhood. Yeah. <laughs> oh, we got a preview. Uh, I had uh, how we're talking. Yeah. Ooh. Man, I'm looking forward to this big air fight. Yeah. Yeah, that's pretty awesome. Oh man, that's that's great. Scarlet her life all in duel in the Devil's Cauldron. Our next exciting episode of GI Joe. Oh, Scarlet's captured. Yeah. Got to give Duke a break. That's an amazing <laughs> show. I don't know about y'all, but that episode seemed to go quickly. It yeah, really did. Yeah, man, it did. I don't know. I, a lot of it, I mean, a lot of that does take place in the water. I guess we had what the Arctic fight. Um, mm -hmm. we had two or three big uh, set pieces in the last episode, yeah, uh, but yeah. this one, the big set piece is underwater, and it, so I think that makes it feel like, as we were talking, it was like more of the same during the underwater fight. Right. Um, but it was really memorable. A lot really of character stuff with Snake Eyes, yeah. That really did, like, if there was a primary character for that episode, it had to be Snake Eyes, I mean. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, for sure. Yeah. Well, Chad, are you going to be, uh... Just... You gonna be joining us for future episodes, or is this like one time? You guys, no, I'd I'd love to, man. This is a blast. I, uh, you know, my internet connection is kind of spotty tonight for some reason, but man, I'm in. This awesome. is good. Happy to have I, you. Uh, I tried. I tried to make Tom promise that I could come back for the uh, for the movie. Cool. There's a lot oh, to talk man. about we, if you guys get around to that. If you guys yeah. get around to that. Yeah. There, there's a there's a plan for the movie, um, where we're trying to figure that out. So there's a couple different options. But uh, we'll, we'll we'll figure it out. We'll figure it out. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm I'm not trying to be too coy, but I just don't want to talk about things until they're actually set up. Yeah, absolutely. Tom's Tom's working on landing some some big fish. Ooh. The Cobra Commander, actually. 
Uh huh. <laughs> the the real guy. Yeah. <laughs> you know, so one, one thing fun. that was really fun uh, just a few years ago when we had the uh, the JoeCon in Springfield, Illinois, because I I lived in Springfield at the time, and uh, the mayor of the town invited uh, Cobra Commander to City Hall, or one of the guys who was cosplaying in the finest <laughs> as Cobra Commander, invited him to City Hall and gave him a key to the city. Oh. And like pictures of this were taken, <laughs> and it was like put in the paper. It was awesome. I was like, "Am I living this? Is this real life?" Like, it was the coolest. That's yeah, it's you know, it, it's hard not to, you know, because we go to so many of these shows and we see people dress up a lot. Um, when you see a really good costume of you know this character or that character, it's hard not to revert to being five, six, seven years old. Oh yeah, absolutely. Um, oh gosh, you know there there were. There was a guy at Dragon Con a couple of years ago who had an amazing uh, battle helmet Cobra Commander costume. And, mm. uh, you know, like, I, and I geeked out so hard on, you know, and you know, he's just some dude that has a day job. And, you know, <laughs> it, it's not like you're actually talking to the Cobra Commander, but like there's something primal in you that disconnects. Oh, and, and you're talking to the Cobra Commander. Yeah. There was a guy that used to do. There was a guy that did Heroes Con multiple years in a row as Cobra Commander Battle Helmet, uh, yeah. and uh, we got in the elevator with him, and like he never broke character, right? So we got in the elevator yeah. with him. We were like, "Man, so cool to see you here this year." Had no idea you'd be back, and he said, "Life is full of surprises." So, like he didn't, <laughs> break, he didn't break character all weekend. It was that, great. Nice. I it's got to be the same guy. Uh, I think I know the guy who who did that. He's an awesome guy, anyway. But I could see him totally staying in character for that oh that's that's the best part yeah yeah there's a guy uh once saw uh he was cosplaying as duke actually i'm i'm blanking on her name but there's a woman who does uh scarlet and uh but it's not like the animated series scarlet it's not even like the comic book series scarlet it's like if scarlet were a real person serving in uh the middle east right now she's got Mm -hmm. like scarf and battle armor but it doesn't look custom it looks like something that's actually been professionally made um oh, wow. and i'm completely blanking on her name but it's it's the design that if i ever get to draw scarlet again professionally like that's the direction i'm going because it looks fantastic yeah yeah I, I'll, I, I'll, I by like, tomorrow night I'll, I'll remember it uh I just, <laughs> I just had a bit of a fanboy moment so i just got word that the one and only larry houston is uh is actually listening to us talk about this in a very uninformed oh, really? way <laughs> larry we are here to offer no insight no learning no wise tidbits uh right. i just sent i just sent the zoom meeting link to uh deanna davis hopefully she'll forward that along to you and if you'd like to join us and actually share some knowledge we would be amazed to have you yeah. on the show uh larry oh, Houston, absolutely he, he did all the storyboarding for these cartoons uh, we talked about it last episode, the silent castle, the silent issue, yeah. uh, G.I. Joe, Larry Hammond. Yeah, yeah. One. That design right. was inspired by the castle that we've seen in the first couple episodes of the mass device already. So thank you, Larry Houston, for all the memories. Uh, here we are nearly 40 years later, still enjoying your work. So thank you for joining us. That's too cool. That's, that is that's cool. Th- this is one of those moments where I'm five years old again in, in awe. <laughs> <laughs> There, no, there's a lot of the a lot of the guys who were who worked on you know that's that still keep in touch with the community like i can't say enough about ron rudat how awesome he is and how approachable he is and yep. and just uh you know he's so i don't know just uh, gracious and complimentary of other people um but yeah i mean so it's i don't know i i love getting in touch with them i think they're they're happy that stuff they created kind of at the time it was their day job you know what i mean I'm sure they were happy with it and they thought it was cool stuff, but it was their day job. And I'm like, man, you know, 40 years later, if what you did on your day job influenced, you know, generation, thousands and thousands of people, like it's a, uh, it's pretty cool. I so, yeah. so I went up to the one and only Hascon in 2017 Hasbro put on this convention for all their properties and they did yeah. a really good job uh, recognizing GI Joe that year. And they brought in, I think 24 of the former creators. This was everybody from marketing to writing to uh, oh, wow. Ron, Ron Rudat that did figure design vehicle design. There was 24, I believe of these folks there. And I swear to God, it was like going to a high school reunion where 
everybody was so happy to see each other again. They created these little file cards, like trading cards with the bio for oh, each of these yeah. people, which yeah, was really cool. cool. Daryl DePriest, uh, shout out to you for uh, managing that portion of it, I believe. Um, it was a, just an amazing experience. And you could tell that they were so happy to be back together. And I heard more than once that weekend that, Yes, it was just a day job, and yes, they were working hard, but they were getting paid to do something they love, but they did have the feeling that it was something special, and that was lightning in a bottle, and for many right. of them, I feel like it was the, like the high watermark of their creative careers. Um, you know, some of them had gone on and done other stuff that they're equally or more proud of, but I'd say the vast majority of them felt like they were really part of something special. And definitely seeing us nerd fanboys like geeking out over it and building websites and doing books and all that crazy stuff. I've gotten a lot of love from them for, for doing that portion of it. So they're just all so friendly and nice and humble. It's amazing. Yeah. yeah. I only got to meet Ron Rudat very briefly at uh, Joe Fest last year. Uh, yeah. Because he just constantly had a crowd of people around him. And I kept kind of <laughs> hoping I would have a moment where – you know, it might just be the, the artists in a room, you know, setting up or something, and, and uh, just that moment never came. So I'm hoping that maybe uh, if, if we can do that at Joe Fest, maybe we can pull him out to dinner some night. Yeah, yeah, we should totally do that. That'd be great. Yeah. I'm sure he'd be down. Yeah. Um, yeah, definitely. And also, Thanks, I want to give awesome. a, just a quick shout out to all of the, all the people who we were kind of in our chat earlier talking about all the G.I. Joe influencers, right? All the people who work really hard just to kind of keep the property alive and the brand alive, yeah. like the Facebook groups, the Ed who's putting on Joe Fest, the people who are putting on like coil con in the Midwest. And, um, you know, yeah, and as soon as I started naming people, I'm positive. I'll forget somebody, but just there's so many great like Facebook groups and community that keep in touch. And, um, just a shout out to those guys who work so hard to kind of share their passion with us. Yeah, I, I know that, you know, several of those groups have, you know, when I was still working on G.I. Joe, they were a resource to finding uniform information, you know, whatever it might be, something pops up that, you know, like Carson, your book, uh, you know, that's a Bible for guys like us. Yeah. Thank so you, you, you Thank guys you. doing that work is yeah. hugely, hugely helpful for us. Well, I'm going to take the spotlight off of me and shine it on Chad Huckle, man. He's helped me do probably half of the man hours on that. So every time that book comes up, I've got to give a shout to Chad because I, I've got a day job. I've got a video and animation company and that would not, that's 4,000 hours worth of work. Wouldn't have happened without Chad. So thank you, Chad. And nice. thank you for the creators. Again, going back to the creators, if they weren't so welcoming to us, I went and sat in Ron's house, sat in Kirk's house, sat in Larry's house, sat in uh, Guy Cassidy's house, who's an amazing vehicle designer. And they'll sit there with you for hours and just do interviews and just talk about this stuff. They love it. And like you said, they're excited that we love it still. So it's an amazing community. I'm lucky to be a part of it. Um, and thank you for shouting out the books, man. That was very nice of you. Oh, they're fantastic. Chad. Holy grail. Yeah. Like what's, what's the one Joe thing that you don't have that you still desperately want? The, the toy oh, that haunts man. you from your childhood. <laughs> you know, I've got a lot, man. Um, yeah. What's the one thing? Golly. Um, I mean, the flag obviously is a huge one, right? Like every, who doesn't want the yeah. flag? Uh, but um, yeah, let's go with the flag. I mean, because I, you know, I used to work at, I worked at a comic shop for years and also was like, uh, kind of took over the toys for a while. And through that, had my hands on a lot of G.I. Joe stuff or got my hands on a lot of G.I. Joe stuff and kind of completed a bunch of stuff uh, at the time. Yeah. But, uh, and put together plenty of flags, but never quite got one for myself that I, that I felt like was the right one. So I think, you know, eventually one day that would be, that would be awesome. I'd really like, and this is really easy to get. I don't know why I don't have one, but like a really, really pristine uh, copy of, of 21 as well would be really, really yep. nice. I don't, I don't have a, a great copy of that. So just a really, really, you know, sharp, crisp copy would be, would be good. They're out there. I just, you know, I'm cheap. I, my <laughs> local yeah. comic shop had one last week and I was just a little too slow. Yeah. Because uh, I, I have one and it's, it's, you know, it's from when I was a kid. So it's almost a beater copy at this point. Right. But, you know, yeah, it's it's mine. But uh, yeah, I would like to have a really nice copy of that. Uh, yeah. The flag for me as well. I, I would love to have a flag. Uh, I know Robert's already got one. He's probably got three or four of them. I'm sure. He, he told us <laughs> yesterday. Ordinal. The other night he told us he's got some absurd number of sky strikers. Oh, um, yeah. But personally, right now I'm I'm working on getting back the original straight arm uh, Joes that that were my 
first introduction to the show. Oh, that's yeah. So I think cool. in a weird way, that's kind of my my grail right now. I don't know yeah, if you could get that, that team whole back lineup. If you get that whole lineup of what you saw that Christmas morning, like that could be pretty. That could be pretty cool. I'm gonna show yeah, you guys I've something. The, uh, give, I've give got me a the second. Bobat, I've got uh, I've Flash and Stalker, Grunt and Rock and Roll, um, and yeah, you know, and, and I'll get there. I'll get there. It's not yeah. something that I'm like, you know, like actively pursuing every day. But you know, I figure when I find them and you know the price is right and the time is right, I'll, I'll get it all back together eventually. Yeah, and I want to give a you, Robert. Oh, real quick, before before I go, I want to give a thanks for Carson for standing up and proving that at least one of us is wearing pants. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys. Just for the fan base. I was going to share supposed something. We're to be wearing pants? I haven't shared this with the community yet. This is my holy grail. I just picked it up. <laughs> well, it's a little while back. Uh. This, is, this is what's called a two-up paint master. So this is the yeah. original hand-painted oh, wow. Lieutenant Falcon, baby. Wow, that's pretty cool. Holy cow. Isn't that crazy? That is pretty awesome. Now, Carson, is your father still with us? He is. Uh, yeah. Yeah. And I, I begged oh. him and pleaded with him to stop going to work a couple weeks ago. Uh, finally, his, his company told him to start working from home. So I'm like, thank you, Jesus. Yeah, he's with us. Um, he's actually a workaholic. It's probably where I get it. Uh, he is working back with the Army again. He did 28 years in the Army. Then he did 20 years with the public school system, and now he's wow. back with the army doing. Holy research. cow! Yeah, oh, he's just wow. kind of a—he's a workaholic. He's a very inspirational guy. So, um, right, well, guys, I'm going to break the really good news to you. We have Larry Houston on the show tomorrow night. Oh, phenomenal! Wow. Yeah, so That's thank you, Larry, awesome. for be willing to join us, man. We really appreciate that. Look That's forward to speaking cool. with you, and uh, cool. yeah. Who wants to do the honors? Um, okay, no, that's great. Everybody, we want to <laughs> – I thought Tom was out. Tom was like, did Tom do the Brandon Bolt? I did do it. We like, lost, lost it. Tom did the Brandon Bolt. I know, man. Um, okay, no, no, definitely I want to thank everybody who was able to log in and uh, to join us tonight, who was able to sit here live. We've had you know, 20, 30 people on a regular basis. Uh, we appreciate everybody who's logged in. Everybody who's joined us in the comments, uh, we appreciate everybody being a good sport and, and being positive there too. Uh, we'll be here again tomorrow night, same time, uh, 8.30 Eastern, 5.30 Pacific tomorrow. Um, and we're going to be going over uh, part five? Part four. Part four. four. Where the yep. heck am I? Okay. I don't even know what day it is. Okay. Part Bye. four tomorrow night. Uh, so be sure to uh, check it out tomorrow. Uh, Carson's going to get that all put up and made pretty and put up on uh, YouTube for us. So thanks again, Carson, for doing that. Happy um, to. Okay, Chad, again, thanks for signing on with us. We appreciate it. It's been good to have you on as one of our Hey, man, thanks for having me. This is, this is a lot of fun. Love to have you again. Thank you for joining us. All right. So with yeah, that, everybody, we're going to sign off tonight. Um, have a good night. We're going to see you all tomorrow. Yo, Joe. He never gives up. He's always there, fighting for freedom over land and air. G.I. Joe. G.I. Joe is there.